how do you uh, approach utilize uh, since it's a short talk i don't know how much time i will get uh, to go into the code but what we can do is uh, maybe look at one or two uh, examples of how to generate graphs uh, mainly uh, in python i'm going to use uh, matplotlib to actually um, show that what are the different kinds of uh, plots that you can draw and how do you actually uh, figure out what's going on in the data so uh, in my talk in the morning for those of you attended we actually can use hadoop for any of these uh, big data systems to actually pull data out from uh, and pull and aggregate data and get it to a level that we can uh, visualize it but uh, there is so much information that is inherent in uh, in the data inherent in the data um, i think anand is here he, he gave a talk excellent talk in the afternoon so uh, i'll go a little more deep into some of these things and especially the emphasis on file um, so let's start uh, so we all know about the data uh, revolution everybody every year we are confronted with data uh, uh, there's, there's financial data this data from social networks so we are constantly struggling to make sense of the data and though we have the tools and uh, we, though we have the tools and uh, for actually uh, taking and analyzing that data what we don't have is how do we actually find out uh, more than just the magnitude of uh, certain uh, uh, certain damage we also probably want to look at the relationship between data and that is what uh, visualization is slowly going going towards it's a fairly uh, interesting field and it's kind of picking up speed and you can see some of the i will go into some of the details like how do we actually take all of these data and start visualizing so this is a uh, tabular data this uh, talks about uh, there are four different countries india greece germany and us and this is telling the month on month inflation uh, and this is represented in a tabular format now if you read this particular slide um, yeah maybe you can figure out you know it has been in the month of april um, it, inflation kind of increase quite uh, quite high increase uh, is typically low but there are in certain months for example in march uh, and in uh, September where it has increased a lot, so uh, it, it still takes a like a lot of time for humans to actually look at the tabular format and make sense out of the data. So what is probably better to do is probably to start plotting this data. Uh, this is an example of a uh, bad graph, but I purposely put one in so that uh, we can find out what's the difference between the good visualization and bad. Uh, probably I think the colors uh, is not very good, but at least from, even if you look from a trend perspective. You can figure out those two points kind of stand out in Greece. Um, US has been fairly consistent. There has been a, a big jump here. Uh, then, if you look at again India, I mean there was a peak and then the trend is upward again. Um, so this is this was drawn using uh, Excel, uh, which is a fairly decent tool for actually doing visualization. A lot of people do not look Excel as uh, a way of actually representing and. Uh, um, representing analyzing and actually uh, uh, plotting data but that is a fairly decent um, so where where should we use visualization what are the different parameters uh, along which uh, visualization can make a huge difference uh, i'll go into uh, examples of each of these but uh, i mean everybody who has seen ppts and has graphs on it people actually use the wrong charts all the time right they will use uh, pie charts when you don't need to have a, a explanation of composition or uh, people uh, people use uh, uh, maybe line charts to show sometimes show distribution but what what visualization should do is actually along these parameters uh, what are we trying to do with what are we trying to show with the are we trying to show a comparison then maybe the best way to do it is maybe use a, a line chart and maybe not something like a bar chart but you will see that a lot of people do do keep on mixing each of them um, the other thing that you want to find out with data is what is the relationship between two sets of data right so if if the visualization actually shows the relationship between two sets of data then it becomes a fairly easy uh, to actually discern what what's going on in the background and rather than just looking at the plain text third is uh, distribution right over a, over a certain axis uh, typically it's time or other certain other dimensions you can actually use a histogram to show the distribution of data along a certain axis and finally uh, composition An example where composition could be extremely useful is um, we constantly as humans try to categorize stuff uh, for example uh, if you take the stock market right 
um, we have different kinds of stocks. We have tech stocks, we have uh, FMCG stocks, we have uh, uh, we have maybe like the shipping sector, the industrial sector. So, so we are different. And under each of these, you have different companies. So if you want to, for example, find out the relationship between each of these companies and what sector they take, then maybe a composition based graph makes sense. Okay, so we'll go into an example in each of these. Uh, so this is like a line chart. So uh, this was done using a very simple uh, example, uh, very easy to draw. Uh, this is the code uh, for it. So actually all the code is uh, up on GitHub. Uh, you can actually, uh, uh, it's, it's already uploaded, then you are a bit clone. Uh, uh, you can go to github.com uh, slash vinayakesh and then uh, under top get this clone and this top is completely updated. So uh, this, this is the code that has uh, generated it. I have given a range and then I have taken random functions and different kinds of random functions. And uh, uh, typically uh, in uh, Matplotlib you just have to uh, it, uh, import PyPlot under which there are a lot of libraries. Uh, you can go and check on the web uh, that 2D libraries, the 3D libraries uh, for, for which you can do interactive visualization. So you take a, uh, take all of these uh, parameters, maybe maybe uh, munch the data, and then eventually just uh, plot using each of these functions. There are the ways you can actually set the title, the labels, um, and the, there is an interactive mode as well. So currently. Uh, I, um, so this is a very simple example. You can actually uh, plot this even in a yeah. And uh, the Matplotlib actually just does static plots, uh, but you can also embed it in Django and other Python related stuff to actually uh, draw plot. So this is an example of uh, comparisons that uh, you can use. Then, uh, if you want to see relationships, especially in uh, data uh, where it is not very apparent, maybe on two or three axes. Uh, scatter plots can not, not necessarily be 2D, but they can do be 3D. Now, if, here I have used a random kind of generator to get a plot, but typically, if you, find, for example, find the, want to find the distance between, say, two people, what you what can see is uh, you can actually use, uh, you can see that there will be clusters of uh, data and of things that are easily correlated. So, that cannot be easily seen in, uh, when data is in a tableau format or a textual format. So when you want to actually explore the relationship uh, between different things, then probably uh, one simple way of doing charting uh, that everybody, every library has is to use a scatter chart. chart. One of the things is when you use uh, PyLab, which is like a um, uh, easy interactive way to do, uh, you, you can either use the save bit which generates or you can use the show function. You will see that I have commented on in the code most of the show function because it brings up the, uh, it, it brings up the uh, uh, dialog box. Same thing with uh, distribution. Um, I'll skip over this. Um, and uh, composition, if you find a pie chart, or the, uh, you can use a stack graph for showing composition. Typically, uh, the example that I gave, like uh, different uh, types of industries and the components in each of these industries can be easily shown by stack chart. Uh, pie chart is useful when you want to see uh, the relationship uh, only on one axis. So it actually reduces the dimensionality. But it is very useful for saying the percentage composition that is there in each of it. So these are like the basics: uh, composition, relationship, uh, and uh, all the all the other parameters that I talked about. And so this is this is how you comparison relationship, distribution, and composition. So these are the four different things that you look at when you actually going to show any data. And then at a very basic stuff that these are the charts that you can use. But what do you want to go beyond that, right? I mean, what what do you want to? How do you show uh, data that is even multi-dimensional? Uh, this 2D chart, uh, in some sense, or two-dimensional, not just in terms of uh, axis, but even in terms of other aspects. How do you bring out the other aspects which show the relationships? So uh, typically, use the exact y-axis. Uh, you can use the z-axis for plotting surfaces. Uh, for example, uh, the function uh, uh, over or a surface over a uh, period of time. Uh, you can see what is the maxima, the minima, very easy. Um, uh, if, especially if you are doing machine learning or any of these things, you want to see how the surface looks and you want to do a gradient descent, for example. You can see how the surface uh, looks. Um, you can also use color. Color as a differentiator. Uh, typically, um, the, you don't use the whole palette. You can still use the whole palette, but typically what you see in most places is that you use the gradient to actually show uh, 
uh, the higher intensity could mean something and the lower intensity in the parrot could mean something else. Uh, size of the elements uh, also uh, can give an indicator. Uh, I'll, I'll give an example of this further down the uh, further down the top. Um, and also the composition because uh, you you can actually show uh, like for example using a tree map how the elements are correlated to each other and how much of that that part we for example if you want to figure out how do you how much of the tech industry uh, is um, how much of the tech industry uh, uh, FB contrib uh, Facebook contributes in the US or Google contributes to the US in terms of market cap you can use the composition and use a box and then on top of it you can actually use uh, the different elements and finally you can use animations uh, I don't have examples of animations in any of my slides but uh, yesterday I found out there's a extremely good uh, library called Chaco C -H -A -C -O, uh, which can be used uh, for uh, visualization, interactive visualization uh, so on the web uh, uh, I have come across Infobiz uh, and Protobiz uh, now I think Infobiz is called B3 uh, it's an excellent library for doing data visualization on, uh, on, on the web uh, we actually used uh, screen graph from uh, D3 to do something during the hacking attack. Um, so the library is very good, especially if you want to uh, look at hierarchical data sets or you want to look at graph structures. Um, that is very good. Uh, if you want to look at relationships and networks, then uh, for visualization there's JP. But uh, I won't go into that right now because I'm just talking about Python what is available. Stream graphs. Uh, so stream graphs is a uh, concept that is based on the work that was done by Lee Byron. Uh, so one of the axes, the base axis, is typically time. And what this graph could do uh, is one is the intensity that can be used here. The other thing that is typically used here is uh, uh, is the composition, right? So if you if you look at it closely, it's actually a stack graph, right? You can see the stack. So what what can something like this uh, represent? Now you look at a listening history of someone. Last.fm, if you, uh, I don't know how many of you use Last.fm. Last.fm has a screen graph where you can look at your whole music listening history and depending on either genre, like maybe rock or pop or world music, uh, you can see how, what kind of genres you have listened to and how, how did they, what, what all did you listen at what kind of, yeah, what, what, what did you listen over a period of time? Um, so that, that, that is, that is something that you can use. Uh, other thing that can be, this can be used that is used very successfully by New York Times is uh, you can see the movie collections and what is the genre of the movie. You can actually plot it over a period of time and each of these can actually represent the movie. So screen graph is extremely useful when you are looking at a period of data and then you have uh, different components of it and color can represent the other one dimension and composition can be shown by the stack graph kind of characteristics that. Uh, this is uh, quite a hinted diagram. Uh, so, uh, in machine learning, typically what you do is you have two matrices, and uh, typically they are positive and negative elements, and they kind of vary in magnitude. So, this is like a 20 by 20 uh, matrix, and uh, the size, the size of the uh, uh, the uh, individual elements uh, tells us, you know, what is the magnitude of that element, and black indicates uh, negative and uh, white indicates positive. So you can actually visualize the whole matrix and see if that again that clusters or you know, how, how does the space kind of map out. So it's very easy to see from a graph like this. Uh, but what pre-map consists of is that uh, it will actually show you the and each of the uh, elements of the tree have a certain weight or it could have multiple weights and you show, can show the composition by what parent it belongs to uh, and uh, also you can show it by the magnitude you can show by the color gradient. So it's actually a tree that's represented. Unfortunately, the original graphic is not similar. Heat maps is another thing uh, that uh, which is very similar to uh, some of the other things that you have seen before. Is that we can actually uh, uh, have multiple axes, and on two axes you can show uh, uh, different kinds of data. Again, you can use uh, composition as well as uh, gradient in this uh, example. Where we have been using this, uh, I work with Adobe, so. Uh, for example, on one side we have a set of publishers, on the other side we have uh, uh, the category that they belong to, and uh, we we can actually uh, the color uh, can actually show you know how much revenue we made from it, or how many clicks we got, or how many uh, ad groups we got. So we can have like uh, three heat maps uh, uh, side by side, and we can see you know what was the ratio uh, which uh, gave and what are the areas that are kind of hot. I mean, or are giving us uh, more revenue or less revenue or more number of clicks. 
based on certain or other metrics based on certain uh, parameters that we have. Uh, so this is, this also can be done using uh, Matplotlib. Uh, the, the code is also fairly easy for doing something like this. So it's kind of built out of the box. Uh, this is a polar plot, uh, typically used in uh, scientific com uh, computing, but uh, you, it's not necessary. You can actually use the uh, circular visualization to actually uh, show the relative uh, overlap as well as uh, so you, you can use space as one of the dimensions and you can also use uh, this um, the, the radial distance as one of the intensities uh, again you can use uh, gradient there also so you are showing like three or four different parameters on the same graph so it's easily possible to do multi dimensional analysis using something like a polar plot uh, finally uh, uh, I'm coming to uh, contour maps. Uh, if you again want to plot a function, uh, this one looks like a sombrero. Uh, and uh, this is one way of showing it. Uh, it can also be shown in a 2D manner. Uh, there are ways in which you can interact with it also, so that you can see from the top how it looks, from the um, side how it looks. Uh, you have maps like this. So you can see the on one side you're seeing the scatter uh, characteristics of this, which is a distribution, on the other side you're seeing the histogram. Saying that how, how are they concentrated on two different axes. So you can use projections or you can use something like a surface also to look at the 3D side of things. So you can actually look at three or four dimensions. Again, here you can see the gradient is used to show the intensity, which anyway is shown, but it kind of accentuates and emphasizes based on the color. Uh, that's it. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I can't show much code, but you can, uh, the, most of the code is kind of self explanatory, uh, and Matplotlib is extremely good for doing. Uh, static plots. Uh, it also has very good indication. Uh, you can go to Matplotlib. There's a whole gallery of uh, uh, visualizations that you can do using Matplotlib. Uh, 